Chang Shamut Simash. Happy Pentecost. Or Happy Feast Shavuot. or Appointed Day of Pentecost. Okay, in, in English or even that comes First from the fruits Greek. of the harvest. Yep. Yeah. And the day's message is titled no. The First Fruits of the Harvest. No. We know we know that at the very beginning of the, we have the Feast of Weeks, okay. The beginning of the Feast of Weeks is the first day of first fruits, okay. And we know our Messiah represents the first of the first fruits of them that slept, okay. So we could see that that's the beginning. We're gonna we worked our way all the way through that count, and now today is the. Uh, third, day, uh, tenth day of the third month of the year fifty-seven eighty-four. Mm -hmm. It's also the fiftieth day of the, pe the feast of uh, weeks and the day of Shavuot and or Pentecost. Count, and how we count? And how we calculate by the full moon as the new moon. And again, if you yeah. want to know why we do that, watch Signs in the Heavens. It's shared on my Facebook page, Bob Farr, every day that I can. Sometimes I don't get to share it. But as a whole, and it explains why we keep the count the way we do. We also know those, uh, there's others that are celebrating the day of Shavuot or Pentecost today as well that are on a similar calendar, but really not, okay? They count, but they arrived on the same day of Shavuot as we had, okay? Their count. So... Happy day of Pentecost to everybody out there that's celebrating today, no matter what calendar that you're following, okay? So today is also, uh, you know, the day, again, it's Pentecost. I don't want to repeat myself. I already said all that. So Just say June 2nd. Today's June, that's what I didn't say. It's June 2nd, <laughs> 2024 on the Gregorian calendar, and it, it's a Sunday, Okay. The day, the word Sunday, we know is pagan. It's the venerable day of the sun. But when in the in the original, back in the days before the, the Israel was in captivity in Babylon, mm -hmm. it was only called the first day of the week. Okay, just like uh, you know, the the only there was first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth day, which was also referred to the preparation okay. day. Okay, and then the Sabbath. Okay, He's the only one that's had a name. These pagan names of the week were added much later and have nothing to do with the count. Okay, some people try to say that you're keeping a Gregorian calendar. I don't believe that at all because the original rotation. As a matter of fact, we even read that yesterday in in uh, Exodus chapter twenty, where it was saying that that count started in the beginning at creation and was carried forward all the way. So again, if you were doing some change like the lunar count, that would throw you off. Sometimes you would go more than six days work before you would celebrate, and sometimes not even six days, and all both of those things would be breaking the commandments and the Torah because it says that we're supposed to be getting all our work done in those first six days, okay? That's just our understanding. Watch uh, again, we have a video on Philadelphia Assemblies called called Lunar Sabbath. Watch that. You'll see our understanding of that. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and uh, stand and face uh, Jerusalem, the place where Yahuwah chose to place his name there. We're going to open in prayer. Almighty Father, Yahuwah, again, we praise you in all things. We thank you so much for, again, the breath of life, another opportunity for a day. We thank you for your precious son that was sent to take away our past sins. That his blood was to cover those through his sacrifice. Father, we thank you and praise you for that. We thank you for this day of Shavuot, our Pentecost. We thank you for the understanding that we have and we're going to do our best, Father, today to communicate that day, the day of Shavuot or Pentecost, and the, the appointed times that were fulfilled in this count and in the day of Shavuot. So, Father, we ask again that you would heal those that are sick, that you would 
uh, give peace to pass us all understanding to those that have lost loved ones. And Father, let these words from this message be your words and not ours. And we ask that your, you would open hearts and minds and eyes to your truth. We ask it all in your precious Son, Yahushua, or Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to start off in the traditional place. And that would be Leviticus chapter 23, and we're going to read verses 4 through 7. 17. 10, through 17. Yep. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to cover everything about the Feast of Weeks and the Passover and the Day of First Fruits. We're going to go right through it. Okay, now uh, verse 4. These are the Feast of Yahuwah, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their seasons. Okay, now this word here, that they're, they're, we're calling feast is 4150 in the, in the Hebrew, which is mohadim, okay, which means appointed times. Same word in uh, that seasons is 4155, okay? So that's a little bit a different Strong's number, but it's the each of the feasts are set in their seasons. And there's a lot of, you know, disagreement on how the calendar is going to be counted. And my opinion, and again, you could bet in a buck and a half maybe now how you might get a cup of coffee. But if you're keeping it in the proper season, you're at least in the ballpark. Okay, so if you're keeping the Passover in the, you know, after the, the equinox and the beginning, in my opinion, the beginning of the month of Abib, okay, then you're in season. If you keep the Feast of Passover prior to that spring equinox, then you're still in the winter season. Okay, and these things, these feasts right here, it says they are to be these mohadim or appointed times are to be kept and, and and proclaimed in their seasons. Proclaim means to announce. Go ahead, brother. And verse five and the fourteenth day of the first month at even is Yahuwah's Passover. Yeah. Now some of them, you know, I know that they're keeping, you know, uh, the, what they call the zodiac uh, calendar. They start counting, I believe, and they, you know, in the comments below, if you want to correct me because I'm not an expert on that, they start counting on the spring equinox as the first day of the month. We go by the first moon phase, which we believe to be the full moon, because from there it's, it's in its perfection and it decreases. And even the book of Enoch agrees with that and other books. Okay, so go ahead, brother. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Mighty One. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. And this was the very day that the children of Israel came out of the promised land before sunup. That's another reason why I believe the day starts in the evening, okay, at the setting of the sun, because it was still dark on the 15th day when they left, the children of Israel left. Okay, brother, so go ahead. Verse 7, and the first day you shall have... A holy convocation or assembly. Yes, sir. You shall do no servile work therein. So it's a set-apart assembly. Now it means it's special time to come together. Go ahead, brother. But you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the mighty one seven days and seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. Shall do no servile work therein. Yeah, servile just means regular work, and it's other than preparing mm -hmm. food is what this is talking about. It's explained in other uh, parts of the scripture, and we need to we realize that you know today our Messiah is our offering made by fire. Okay, so we're not offering an offering made by fire because He's done that for us, and that will be held until there's a Levitical priesthood again in the millennial reign, and then, according to the book of Zechariah, that will happen again. Go ahead, brother. Verse 9, And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you, you be come into the land which I give unto you, and you shall reap the harvest thereof, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. So this is important too, and we know this was Yahuwah speaking this through his Ruach to Moshe. He's telling him to speak to the Ben or the sons of Israel and say to them, 
when you come into the land. So they weren't going to do this while they were in the wilderness. They were going to do this when they come into the land. Some people teach we shouldn't be keeping the feast till we come back into the land, but we know our Messiah instructed us wherever two or more were gathered in his name, there he would be in the midst of us, okay? And we could see in Corinthians that Paul or Shaul was keeping the feast where he was in hopes he would be back in Jerusalem by the day of Shavuot or Pentecost, which would be today. So he was keeping, he kept the days... The, the Passover, the days of unleavened bread, and then he moved, he was working his way back so that he might be able to be there by the day of Shavuot or Pentecost. And it's this is obviously given from Yahuwah. So it's his set apart days and not ours, which I give unto you. You shall reap the harvest of it when they came into the land, took over other people's works. Then you will bring a handful of the first fruits, which would be a barley offering, okay? Because the first crop that came available was the barley of the harvest unto the priest or the coin. Go ahead, brother. Verse 11. And he shall wave the sheaf before, before Yahuwah to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. So... This is very, you know, descriptive here. And again, these things are like Hebrew idioms. They're playing it out like a dress rehearsal over time. They, the children of Israel were acting these things out. And what was going on it's, it, it, here is that he, he, you were going to give this wave sheet, this handful, be to or before Yahuwah to be accepted for you or in your stead. Okay? And... and it, it, it's a peace offering, okay? Our Messiah was a peace offering. When he died, his, his blood covered our past sin, made it possible for us to approach the high priest, okay? Or Yahuwah, come directly before Yahuwah, okay? And he says, on the next day after the Sabbath, this has to be talking about the seventh day Sabbath. This cannot be talking about the uh, first day of unleavened bread here, okay? The coin will wave it before Yahuwah to be accepted in our stead. Go ahead, verse 12, brother, when you get ready. And you shall offer that day when you wave, wave the sheaf of a he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the mighty one. And that's obviously talking about our Messiah being offered for mm -hmm. us, this lamb without blemish, a perfect mm -hmm. lamb of Elohim. Go ahead. Verse 13. And the grain offering thereof shall be two tenth deals of fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah for a sweet savior. And the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, the fourth part of a hymn. This, this is so important to get the, uh, the picture here that's being painted by this repetitive uh, action that's being done every year. See, there was a grain offering and this grain offering, they would make unleavened cakes. Okay, we're going to read it as we continue here. These cake offering, bread or unleavened cakes, represented the body of our Messiah, which later would be taken as the Passover sacraments at the beginning of the Passover. Okay, it was being played out over and over in the temple when they gave out this these grain offering and also the wine offering. And it's, it's, it's explaining that as it goes. Go ahead, brother, in verse 14. And you shall eat neither bread nor parched corn, the grain, right. nor green ears, until the self same day that ye have brought an offering unto your Elohim. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. And, and this is talking about for the day of first fruits. Okay, this wave sheet, this handful. To represent our Messiah, the first of the first fruits, those that had died and been raised from the dead. Okay, back then that they were just looking at it as they're giving their their uh, increase offering to Yahuwah, the first of the first fruits. Then, but this was pointing towards our Messiah. Notice it says you shouldn't have any. He said you shall eat neither bread nor dried grain. Parch means that they could dry it. In the book of Numbers, it talks about 
If it's not in the uh, a bib stage, they could actually dry the barley. That's what this is. You should eat neither bread nor dried grain nor green ears, okay, which is talking about those actual barley uh, unripened ears until the same, self same day. So you didn't eat any until you brought your first fruit offering to Yahuwah. That's what this is talking about, or to Elohim. It shall be a statute or ordinance or right ruling unto your, uh, 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 throughout all your generations and all your dwellings. And we all know that we are Israel, you know. So, yeah, this was for Israel, okay? But it's for us today as we become the commonwealth of Israel and are grafted into that good, that good olive tree. Okay, we'll talk about that a little more as we continue. Go ahead, brother. Verse 15. And he shall come unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbath shall be complete. Now, this is describing how you get from the day of first fruits to the day of Shavuot or Pentecost. And if you're not going by Leviticus 23, then you're not, it's not scriptural, it's not biblical. Okay, and it says, and you shall count unto you from the day after the Sabbath day. This is talking about the seventh day Sabbath. Okay, that's why Shavuot or Pentecost is always celebrated on the first day of the week. And that's why in the, uh, the, the Brit Hadashah or New Testament, the first day of the week is talking about the wave sheep or the day of first fruits, that day that they brought that. And that had to be on the morrow after the Sabbath. It wouldn't have been the next day of unleavened, on the first day of unleavened bread. That won't work out correctly. From the day that you brought the handful of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be completed. As we've counted down to the day of Shavuot, we have seen seven seventh day Sabbaths between the day of first fruits and the day, the, the, the culmination of the Feast of First Fruits that is called Shavuot, or Pentecost. Go ahead, brother. 16, even unto the, unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall you number 50 days, and you shall offer a new grain offering unto the mighty one. Yes, and, and now we're going to get into <coughs> the day of Shavuot and what this day's offering represents. Okay, and again, it's a Hebrew idiom pointing towards that first resurrection that we see in Scripture, which is for those that are in that Melchizedek priesthood. So he's, he, this is why we have already counted seven Sabbaths and 50 days, and now we're ready to offer the Shavuot offering. Okay, go ahead, brother. 17, you shall bring out, you should bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be a fine flour. They shall be bacon with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Yahuwah. Okay, so now, okay, we, we, we have a representation of that. Obviously, we're not offering loaves as a, a burnt offering or anything of that nature. But these two loaves are representative of the two churches in Revelation. We're going to be reading that too, okay? which is the first fruit harvest because those are the two churches. We have uh, Philadelphia and Smyrna are the two churches that represent the ones that Yahuwah pre, pre, uh, he was looking for. Those would be those first fruits of those. They would be the witnesses. We're going to read that too. Go ahead, brother. I think that was it last verse. Okay. Where we go now, brother, Revelation yep. 11. Chapter 11 of Revelation. Yep, and here's where we're going to start getting into the meat of what we're talking oh, about here. A lot of misunderstandings and a lot of other opinions, we'll just put it that way, uh, of these two witnesses. We're going to look at those two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11. Okay, went too far. Here we go. Here we go. Whenever you're ready, brother. Okay. Verse 1, Revelation 11, verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and a messenger stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of Elohim and the altar and them that worship therein. 
And this is very similar to what you're reading back in the book of Ezekiel when, you know, when they're measuring this messenger or Moloch was measure, measuring the temple. Okay, so this is a similar vision that Johann or Johannikin had saw while he was in this vision. Go ahead, brother. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is for it is given unto the nations, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. So this is all prophetic, talking about the end days are going to be trodden down by the nations for forty two months. Go ahead, brother. Verse, verse three. three. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand and two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. Okay, now a lot of people will say right here, and they got a big question mark even in the comments here, whether this is Moses or, or Elijah or Enoch and Elijah, okay? And, you know, the, obviously they'll probably be included. I would say all of those will be in those two churches, either Revelation or either Philadelphia or Smyrna, okay? But the next verse, okay, is going to, uh, did you read verse 4? I didn't read, I did not read okay, verse Okay, verse 4 is going to identify the two witnesses. Now, because, right. remember in verse 3, you got to stay in context. This, when we take right. things out of context, that's how we get messed up. It says, I will give power unto my two witnesses. This is talking about the two witnesses here. Right. And they will prophesy a thousand, two hundred, and three score days clothed in sackcloth and ashes. Verse 4 tells you who these two witnesses are. Go ahead, brother. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before Elohim of the earth. Okay, so what is he talking about here? Well, in Zechariah chapter 2, verse 6, if you go read in Zechariah chapter 2, I suggest read the whole chapter. He's going to identify Israel as the two olive trees. Okay? The two olive trees he's identifying as the northern tribes and the southern tribes. Okay? And then he talks about the two candlesticks, okay, which I are identified in Revelation chapter 1. Okay? And in uh, verse 20, it says, The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. These are the golden candlesticks. Seven stars are the messengers. Okay? of the seven ecclesia, or groups, and the seven candlesticks which you saw are the seven assemblies, okay? So all seven, but we know that two were the only ones that were favored by Yahuwah. The rest he had somewhat against, okay? So we see the two olive trees, and some might say, well, how, well does Zechariah really say that? Well, I think Paul or Shaul would have agreed with that. That's why in Romans chapter 11, he talks about the grafting in of from the natural olive tree to the wild olive tree. So obviously when he's speaking of the olive tree, he's speaking of Israel, the physical seed, okay? And the nations were being grafted in among them or becoming Israel, which Ephesians chapter 2 would agree with, okay? So now you can see who the two olive trees and the two candlesticks are put together. And you can read that in Ezekiel chapter 37. Okay, we didn't put all that in here today. We'd be here all day where it talks about the, the two sticks would become one in Messiah's hand. Okay, and, and that would be at the millennium. That would be the northern tribes, which was headed by Ephraim and, and, and when, they made, when they were cut off. Okay, the seven, the, the northern tribes were there when they got cut off. Okay, and then the southern tribes, which is Judah, that's the other, the other of the olive trees. Okay, and Paul affirms that in Romans 11, talking about the, the natural olive tree. That would be the whole house of Israel, physical seed. Okay, go ahead, brother. Where Revelation. One, chapter one. One. Back to where I already kind of jumped in there, didn't I? Sorry about that. Sorry. Right. Mm -hmm. Chapter one, starting in verse seventeen. Mm -hmm. And when I saw when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. 
And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Mm -hmm. Now obviously this is our Messiah, Yahushua, speaking here. Mm -hmm. Notice he didn't say he's the Alpha and the Omega. Okay? Mm -hmm. The beginning and the end. He said he was the first and the last. Well, what is he talking about? He was the firstborn of them that slept. Okay? And he that is first will also be last. That's what he's speaking here. Go ahead, brother. Verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. What's he talking about here? You know, the word hell here is Hades, which is equal to the Hebrew word Sheho. Okay? So it, I don't think I have the Strong's number here for the for Hades, but you can look that up and it's... She owes 86. Hebrew uh, strong is concordant 86. Okay? So Messiah is identifying himself mm -hmm. quite clearly here. He says, I am he that lives and was dead. Now, Yahuwah never died. It's not possible for Yahuwah to die. Okay? So he says, I am he that lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Because he's been resurrected by Yahuwah through his Ruach. And he says, Amen. He says, and I have the keys of Hades and of death. First resurrection. That's what he's speaking here. And second, but specifically the first here. Go ahead. Verse 19, write, write the things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the messengers of the seven churches or ecclesias. Mm -hmm. And the seven candlesticks which you saw are the seven churches. So we, we would, you, you could start right in verse 2, which we're not going to read all of that at all. Okay? Or are we? Yes, we are. Revelation 2, verse 1 through 29. Yeah, Go ahead, brother. We'll, we'll break it down as we go. Chapter 2. Going in chapter 2. Unto the angel, or the messenger of, of the ecclesia of the Ephesus, right? Mm -hmm. These things saith he that holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walked in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. So we can see here's the messenger that he just explained in verse 20, okay? Because he said the seven stars are the messengers, okay? And this first messenger is unto the angel or messenger of the assembly, or the uh, Ecclesia of Ephesus, write these things, saith he that holds the seven stars. Who owns the seven stars, which are these messengers? These are the seven, you know, it's, it's Yahushua, okay? It's also taught about the seven spirits of, of Elohim, too. Go ahead. I know, verse 2, I know your works and your labor and your patience, and how you cannot bear them which are evil. And you has tried them, which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars. Okay, so this is Ephesus. Go ahead, brother. And has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. Or given up. Go ahead. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you, because you has left your first love. Okay, so look right here already. Now, th this is the problem that these other congregations, other than the two, have well, number one is they left their first love. Who's your first love when you you got to come to Messiah? There's no way that you can do that. A lot of people are doing that today. They'll come in and they'll first thing they'll do is say Paul or Shaul is a false prophet, and it's not long after that they end up starting they'll kick the whole New Testament or Brit hot a shot to the curb. And when they do that, they end up leaving their first love or the Messiah. Okay, that's a dangerous path to start down. Shaul was a expert in the Torah. Okay, he was trained by the great Gamaliel. Okay, and it's a big mistake to start counting him as some kind of false prophet just because, like the apostle or the sent out one Peter told us, that they the things that Paul writes are sometimes hard to understand. Okay. And people twist them to their own destruction. And believe me, when you end up walking away from Messiah, that's twisting yourself to the, your own destruction because there's no way to Yahuwah except through Yahusha. His name literally means Yahuwah saves. Go ahead, brother, verse 5. Remember, therefore, from where you are fallen and repent. 
Mm -hmm. and do the first works or else I will come unto you quickly and will remove your candlestick out of its place except you repent. Now think about that. He get, he's given them an opportunity here after Johann had went through this vision and the book of Revelation was written, okay, or Hazan in Hebrew, to repent. But what did he say he was going to do with them? If they didn't repent, he's going to remove their candlestick. Okay, so when you do that, then that removes that church from the first resurrection. Go ahead, brother. So verse 6, but this you has, and, and you hate as the deeds of the Nicolish, which I also hate. I've done, we've done a lesson, Brother Eric and I, on what the Nicolaitans were. We suggest you go read that. And, and he does hate the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. It's, the, uh, it's a doctrine of false gods, Baal, okay? And, mm -hmm. and, and other such things. You need to watch the video. Go ahead, brother. Verse 7, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the, the churches or ecclesias. Okay, so the Spirit is capitalized. Seven. This is not talking about that angel. This is talking about what the Spirit said to the messenger that was reported to the churches. Go ahead, brother. To, to him that overcomes... Well, I, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of Elohim. So if you don't repent, he's going to remove your candle, and, you, and that's going to remove you from the first resurrection if you remain in those things, which he identified with the church at Ephesus. Go ahead, brother. Verse 8, And unto the messenger of the church in Smyrna, right? These things say at the first, and the last, which was dead and is alive. So in other words, the one that, again, is saying this now is mm -hmm. Yahushua. He's reporting this mm -hmm. to Johann the, uh, Johann the Apostle, or sent out one. Go ahead. Verse 9, I know your works in tribulation and poverty, but you, in parentheses, but you are rich, and I know what a blasphemy of them, which are say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. And, and, and we know that they're talking about the Yehudim. They're talking about those that say they are in the lineage of Messiah, and they are not. The book of Ezekiel, again, is the key to understanding a lot of these things, because it also identifies the great imposters. There's people in the land of Israel right now that are posing as Israel that are not Israel, and they're being exposed. Okay, That's, Listen to what it says. I know their works. He, he knows, uh, again, the Smyrna. These things say it the first and the last. I know your works and the tribulation and the poverty. So they're, they're going through some hard times, tribulation. But you are rich, spiritually speaking. And I know the blasphemy of them that say they are the Yehudim and are not, and are of the synagogue of Satan. And some might say, you know, talking about the Catholic Church, yeah, but they're also talking about those that are, say they are the Yehudim and are not. Go ahead, brother. Verse 10. Fear none of those things which you you shall suffer. Uh, behold, the devil shall cast some of you in prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. But be you faithful unto death, and I will give the, you a crown of life. Didn't say anything yet, has he, about removing their candlestick, has he? Notice this is Smyrna. Go ahead, brother. Verse 11, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be heard at a second death. If you stay in what you have, you will not be hurt by the second death. Notice he didn't have anything against them. He said Satan would cast them into prison, but he, he said, just hang on. Don't give up. Don't faint. And you'll get that. You won't, you will have overcome, and you shall overcome that second death. It won't hurt you. Go ahead. Verse 12. And to the messenger of the church in Pergamos, right? Mm -hmm. These things saith he, which has the sharp sword with two edges. Mm -hmm. I know your works and where you dwell even where Satan's seat is. And you hold fast my name and has not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwells. Now this is an actual location, okay, in the area of these churches, okay, that where they were at. So they know exactly where that is, and, you, you, and Antipas, all, all, obviously, 
was a Greek, okay, or a Roman, one of the two, okay? So he was sitting in this place that's called Satan's seat, okay? So and very important to understand that, and you can do your own research and find out where Satan's seat is in the area of the seven churches. Go ahead, brother. Verse 14. But I have a few things against you, because you has there them to hold the doctrine of Balaam, mm -hmm. who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. And that's back in Numbers 31, 16. Go ahead. So, so has you also them that hold the doctrine of the, of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. So he repeats the same thing. And, and if you study out the doctrine of uh, the Balaam, mm -hmm. okay, it's very similar to that of the Nicolaitans. So he hates that, okay? And you need to study that out or, or, and watch our video and then study it out. Go ahead, verse, verse 16. 16. Repent or else I will come unto you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Talking about the Ruach, the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. 17. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat, give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in a stone of uh, a name, new name written, which no man knows, save he that receives it. Okay, so we, we could see right here that he had something against this church. Now, he didn't come right out and say about removing their, their uh, candlestick, but I assure you if they continue in this doctrine that he hates, he's going to remove their candlestick. Go ahead, brother. Verse 18, And unto the angel or the messenger of the church of Thyatira, mm -hmm. right, these things saith the son of Elohim, who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like unto fine brass. Okay, so that's like burnished brass. We've looked, we talked about that in other videos. That means it looks like molten brass. Okay, so that's the Messiah identifying himself right, white. to be like fire, you know, fire, just white. like Yahuwah is all concerning consuming fire. Okay, mm -hmm. he's now a spirit being. Okay. So he, he's telling you here he's the son of Elohim. Didn't say he was Elohim, did he? All through the Brit Adashad says that Messiah is standing at the right hand of Elohim. If he was Elohim, he wouldn't stand at the right hand of Elohim. Go ahead. Verse 19, I know your works and charity, or love, and service and faith, and your patience, and your works, and the last to be more than the first. Mm-hmm. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against you because you permitted that uh, that woman Jezebel, which caused her a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed on the idol. See how see see how terrible it is that they get seduced by, and this is talking about idolatry seduction, okay? And they and and they literally had. Uh, this, they're using the term of Jezebel, but again, it's not necessarily just that actual woman Jezebel in Scripture. It's speaking about a rebellious woman, okay, which calls herself a prophetess, okay? Now, there are prophetesses. We know that. Deborah was a prophetess, okay, to teach and to seduce them away from the truth. My servants to commit fornication against the Most High, with other gods, or Elohim, little e, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. That's why Shaul, or Paul, is all over that in his epistles or his letters about eating things sacrificed to idols. Okay, he's not talking about not eating meat. He's not talking about, you know, clean and unclean with that. He's talking about things sacrificed to idols. Go ahead, brother, verse 21. And I gave her space or time to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Now he's talking about the church here is what he's talking about. You know, not just Jezebel, but he gave them time to repent, and they did not repent. Go ahead, brother. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit fornication, adultery with her, 
into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And obviously he knew some of them were going to repent of their deeds, and any of them that repented are going to come through these other two churches, Smyrna or Philadelphia, okay? And none of us here are, comp are in any way saying that we and we alone are the Philadelphia yeah. assembly. We don't know if we're part of that or not. We, do, we hope to be. We are trying to self-identify as that. But we're not claiming that if you're not part of the Philadelphia, that you're not part of the deal. Right. That's completely off base of what we believe at all. Go ahead, brother. 23, and I will kill her children with death. And all the churches, churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and the hearts. And I'll give unto every one of you according to your works. Okay, and this is Messiah again saying that he knows the, the deeds of this congregation at Thyatira and offering them a chance to repent. And if they don't, he's going to kill their kids. He, right here he says he will kill her children, those that remain in that congregation with death. Not talking about dying physically, talking about the second death. Okay, and all the congregations, plural, or ecclesias, will know that I am he, the Messiah, the one that died and was risen from the dead, which searches the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. He'll do that with all of us, regardless of who we self-identify. If we don't do what's right, we're going to kill us with death at the lake of fire. Go ahead, brother. 24. But unto you I say, and unto the rest of thy Tyra, Tyra, as many as I have not this doctrine, and have not and have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden than what they have. Okay, so hold on to what the knowledge and understanding that you have, and repent of these things I told you to repent of, and he put nothing else upon them. Okay? You don't have to have all truth to get into the kingdom. No. Okay, But whatever you have, you have to hold on to. Go ahead, brother. But that which you have already, hold fast till I come. There it is. Mm -hmm. And he that overcometh and keeps my works unto the end, to him will I give power, power over the nations. Okay, now, now notice that phrase. Okay? Why does he say that over the nations? He says, and he that overcomes, there will be obviously they'll be grafted into the commonwealth of Israel, then they'll be in that first resurrection if they do what? If they keep his works until the end. If you do what Messiah did until you die, to him will I give power over the nations. That's talking about that priesthood after the order of Melchizedek and that thousand year millennial reign when there is human beings here on earth that are still the nations, he's going to give you power over them. You're going to be in that first resurrection. You're going to be part of that Melchizedek priesthood. Go ahead, brother. 27. And he shall rule them, rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter. Shall they be broken to pieces, mm -hmm. even as I received of my father. See, he's not claiming to be the father. He said he received them of his father, didn't he? So he's still separate from his father, and this is in the book of Revelation, much after Messiah had ascended back. So, and this is referring to what's written in Psalms 2 9. Go ahead, brother. Verse 28. And I will give him the morning star. <clears throat> any, any, any one of us that end up, you know, being grafted in, he's going to give you the morning star. Go and we know that morning star is referring to our Messiah. Go ahead. He that has an ear, has an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit says on the churches. Yes. For uh, going into chapter three of Revelation, and unto the angel or messenger of the church of uh, in Sardis, write: These things saith he that has the seven spirits of Elohim. Now think about what he just said here. That's why I mentioned earlier these seven messengers that are to these seven churches are the seven spirits of Elohim. The book tells you if you have ears to hear and eyes to see. He says, Unto this messenger of the church in Sardis, write these things, saith he that has the seven spirits of Elohim. Okay? And the seven stars, which are the seven churches, 
I know your works that you hast a name that you livest and are dead. They're alive right now, but they're going to be dead in the second death. Go ahead, brother. Uh, verse 2. Uh, did you read, finish reading that first one? I did. You okay. didn't? Re you can read it again if you didn't read it. Well, he that has an... Okay, let me just start. Uh, okay, read the whole book. And unto the uh, messenger of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that ha has the seven spirits of Elohim and the seven stars. I know your works, that you has a name, that you live that you livest and are dead. Okay, so he, the same one that has these seven spirits, mm -hmm. which are the ones that are speaking and addressing these seven churches. Go ahead, brother. Verse 2, Be watchful and, and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works complete before Elohim. So he's, they're not complete before Elohim, and if they don't repent, he's going to remove their candlestick. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3, remember therefore how you has received and heard and hold firmly and repent. If therefore you shall not watch, I will come unto you as a thief and you shall not know what hour I will come upon you. Yep. You has a few, you has a few names even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. So even those that are among those other churches or congregations that are still have this wedding garment, they're worthy. They're going to be pulled out of that. They're going to come through one of these other two congregations that will be left. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his messenger. So you don't have to think, you know, just because the first part of my walk, I was messed up. If you repent, he's not going to blot your name out of the book. He's going to treat you the same as he would anyone else that is worthy. Go ahead, brother. And verse 6, And he, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Mm -hmm. And that messenger of the church in Philadelphia writes, these things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that, is, that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. Now think about what, what he said here. He says in, in verse uh, 7, he says, And the messenger of the congregation, the ecclesia, okay, in Philadelphia, write these things. This, let, this message is being supposed to be written down by John to give to these congregations. These things saith he that is set apart, our Messiah. He that is true. He's proved himself. He's been tested and he's mm -hmm. true. He that has the key of David. The key of David is that there would always be a king on the throne of Jerusalem that was a, a, a part of the from David that would come out of David after that. And if you look, there always was in Jerusalem, and our Messiah is going to complete that in the thousand-year millennial reign. And he that opens and no man shuts, and shuts and no man opens. So what door is the Messiah opening? To Yahuwah, the door to Yahuwah. That's why he's known as the door. He's the way, mm -hmm. okay? He's the truth, and he's the life. Go ahead, brother. Verse 8, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it, for you has a, li for you has a little strength, a little power, and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. So there's two requirements there. Number one, okay, to be part of this congregation, you have to keep his word. Now, does that mean you never made any mistakes? No, everybody made mistakes except Messiah, okay? So you can make mistakes, but as long as you repented and you did that to the end, like he said to the other churches, okay? And have not denied my name, okay? Go ahead, brother. Verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before your feet and to know what I, that I have loved you. There's a, a, a connection here to Isaiah 60, verse 14, okay? So, again, these ones that call, he says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which is the false church, okay? 
beginning with those ones that say they are the Yehudim and are not, okay? Which say, and are not, but do lie, okay? Behold, I will make them to come and worship, or this would have been better translated to bow down before your feet, which means to say that you were right and they were wrong. He's going to make them say that and to know that I have loved you, okay? The ones that are worthy. No matter which church you physically came out of. Go ahead. Verse 10, because you have kept the word of my patience, mm -hmm. I will. I also will keep you from the hour of temptation, which, mm -hmm. is, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Okay. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12 tells you about what the word of his patience yes. is. Okay. Patience of the believer. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna read that real quick. The faith of Yahusha. Yep, that's exactly right. Brother Eric knows that by heart. They keep the commandments. Huh? Yep. That that's the key. Revelation yeah. 14, 12. Patience of the believer. Mm -hmm. And that's what we gotta do. He said Revelation 14, 12 says again, he is the patient. here is the patience of the believers or the saints. Okay. Here are they that keep the commandments of Elohim and have the faith of Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. How do you do that? You endure to the end. Exactly what he did, even death. Okay? So that's where that goes. That's the patience of the saints. Verse 11, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast that which you have and have no end that that no man take your crown. So, again, every one of us has to hold on to the truth that we have, okay? Mm -hmm. We're not going to have all truth. We're, go we're going to be in error in some things, but we got to be sincerely here to please Yahuwah with the whole heart, to try to be like the Messiah as much as we can. Happy are we if we do these things, and ultimately we want to be happy. Go ahead, brother. It him that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my Elohim, and and shall go and go and shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my Elohim and the name of the city of my Elohim, which is New Jerusalem, which which shall come down out of heaven from my Elohim, and I will write upon him my new name. So very important to understand what he's talking about. Obviously, Messiah is not Elohim. He says, he, he, he said very, he said, him that overcomes, will I make a pillar? And that means a support. Okay, well, that's what a pillar is. In the temple of my Elohim. This is Messiah speaking. Mm -hmm. And he will go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my Elohim. Okay, which is Yahuwah. Okay, mm -hmm. and write and the name of the city of my Elohim, and it tells you which is New Jerusalem that's going to come down out of the, the heavens or the Shamayim. Go ahead. Verse brother. thirteen: He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Mm -hmm. And unto the angel, a messenger of the church of the Laodiceans, write these things, saith the Amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of Elohim. Who's the beginning of the creation of Elohim? Doesn't mean Messiah was in the beginning. He's talking about the sons of Elohim here. Messiah was the very first true son of Elohim that had the Ruach of the Father dwelling in him. Okay? So right here he's telling you very he's the beginning of this family that Yahuwah is creating. Okay, bro. And he says, go ahead. Bro. Okay, verse 15. Yeah. <laughs> I know your works, and you are neither cold nor hot. I would, I would, you rather were cold or hot. This is talking about Laodicea here, okay? So they think they're, they're better than everybody else, kind of like the, the Pharisees did. Listen as he reads on. Go ahead. Okay, so verse 16. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will, I will spew you out of my mouth, or vomit. Vomit you out of my mouth. Yeah. Because you say, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and know it's not that you are wretched, and miserable, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Because 
Remember, the true riches are the wisdom of Elohim, which is the Ruach of Elohim. It's his Torah, it's his commandments, it's all those things. Go ahead, brother. I counsel you to buy me of gold tried in the fire. Yes, sir. That you may as be rich in white raiment, that you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear, and anoint your eyes with eyes of, and you that you may see. So if any of them repented and did what he's warning them to do here, then they could be restored. That's what he's telling them. Go here, brother, on 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Yep. Everybody's being warned here to repent. And we're still warning people today, repent. You know, because the time is going to come when today is no longer today. You're not going to have that opportunity when you're dead or when the Messiah returns. Go ahead. Verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door mm -hmm. and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. So we got to first come to the Messiah and anytime he's, he's the door and he says, come on to the door and knock and I will let you in and we will dine together. And, and he's talking about the, uh, the Passover sacraments. He's talking about that bread and that wine. Become, and, and listen to what he says. Go ahead, brother. To him that overcomes, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. So his father's still there, and he sat down in the throne with him. Okay? That's not, yeah. He's not the father, you know, because he wouldn't sit down with his father. Right. If he was the father. Go ahead. He that has an ear, let him hear what what let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And we're going to Zechariah. Zechariah. Four. <coughs> Zechariah chapter four. Chapter 4, verse 1. Get there. Here we got a messenger again. And a messenger that talked with me came again and, and waked me as a man that is awakened out of, sleep, out of his sleep. And said unto me, what, what do you see? And I said, I have, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and, and its seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top of it, or thereof. Now, and I'll tell you something I did for, fail to mention when I was in, a, in, a, in a, a Revelation. It should have been translated lamps, okay, not candles, okay. It was talking about lampstands. And those, so this is the same thing, same language you heard in the book of Revelation. He says, and said unto me, what do you see? And I said, I have, I have looked, and behold, the candlestick, all of gold, okay, with a bowl on top of it, and seven lamps thereon. So these candlesticks are oil lamps, what they're talking about, and seven pipes are spouts, because they're oil lamps, okay, to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof. It's describing what we were reading in Revelation. Go ahead, brother. And the two olive trees by it, one, one upon the side, right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side of the bowl. Okay, here we are with those two olive trees, okay? Mm -hmm. And which they know is Judah and Israel, are, are the northern tribes of Israel. Go ahead, brother. So I answered and spake to the messenger that talked with me, saying, What are these, my lord? Master, and it's a little L here even, so mm -hmm. they know they're speaking to a messenger, not right. to the Most High. Yeah. And the messenger that talked with me answered and said unto me, Know you not what these be? And I said, No, my master. Okay. Then he, then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of Yahuwah, or Elohim. Unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by, nor by power, 
but by my spirit, saith the Yahuwah of the multitude. So he's talking about his Ruach here. Not, not by might, this is in red, okay? Right. Not nor by power, but by my Ruach, saith the, the Yahuwah of the multitudes. Mm -hmm. So this is being spoken by a messenger to uh, Zechariah. Go ahead. Verse 7, who are you, O great mountain? Authority. Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. So he's talking about it being leveled. And the, and the hill he's talking about is the one Jerusalem sits on. Go ahead, brother. Verse 8. Moreover, the word of Elohim came unto me, saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And you shall know that the Yahuwah of the multitudes have sent me unto you. Mm -hmm. For who have despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice, rejoice and shall see the plummet, or the plumb line, yes. in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of, of Yahuwah. Or the, seven or, Elohim. Spirit, yep. Yep. or the seven spirits of Elohim. Which run to and fro through the whole earth. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side of it? And verse 12. And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which which threw the two golden pipes empty, the golden oil, golden oil out of themselves. And he answered me and said, Know you not what these be? And I said, No, my master, no. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by Elohim of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. And now you know the answer. No, I mean, that's telling you exactly what we read in Revelation. Yep, Revelation now, chapter 20. So now I know those are get the two door, anointed those, ones. Those are the two witnesses that they're talking about, okay? You've would you you've got the two king, the two tribes, the two there, they're going to become one in Messiah's hand in, in, in Ezekiel chapter 37 at the millennium, and then the other ones are going to be the, you know, the rest of the right. congregation, those churches that are mentioned in Revelation Chapter uh, 2 through 4. Revelation chapter 20, starting at verse 1. This is going to lay out the, the whole timeline that's going on. Go ahead, brother, when you get ready. And I saw an angel or messenger come down from heaven, having a key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So he's going to be in the in the pit for a thousand years not forever and ever like we've always you know been taught by in congregations this doesn't start till the millennial reign and the satan's going to be bound in a bottomless pit and that's not talking about down in the middle of the earth okay that's tartarus go ahead brother and can and cast him into the bottomless pit verse three and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him or lock him up and set a seal upon him that he should that he should deceive the nations no more mm -hmm. until the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that must be loosed a little season. See, because the people while. that are alive in that millennial reign are going to get the opportunity to know the truth. Mm -hmm. And they're going to know the whole truth and they're going to be able to be do that. But at the end, they need to be tested just like we are. And so Satan's going to be in there, but he's going to be loosed for a little season after the thousand years to, you know, deceive the nations. Go ahead, brother. Verse 4, I, I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the lives of them that were beheaded for the witnesses of Jesus, or Yahushua, and for the word of Elohim, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and 
and reign with Christ a thousand years. So he's talking about that priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. He said, and I saw thrones and they sat upon them. That'd be, again, those two churches that are in that first re resurrection and judgment was given unto them because they're going to be ruling with a rod of iron through that thousand years, okay? And I saw the lives or the beings of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahushua and, and for the word of Elohim, which is two different things, okay? And which had not worshipped the beast. Now, how do you worship the beast? Don't keep Yahuwah's commandments. Do whatever you want. That's how you worship the beast. Neither to his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. Go ahead. Verse 5, but the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. So they were in the rest of them, only those two congregations, Smyrna, Philadelphia, those two witnesses, will live and reign during that thousand years. Go ahead, brother. This is the first resurrection. That's what it is. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of Elohim and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Yep, that's it. Now we're going to start talking about the second resurrection. Okay, 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15. First Corinthians 15. So I can kind of speak that a little louder. So, mm -hmm. Matt, so it's Corinthians 15. We had our mics. Yeah. Um, We're working on it. Working we'll, on that. We'll get straight out. I'll, if I keep going to the right place here, I'll, I'm there now. First Corinthians 15. I'm going to pick it up. 20. You know, because it's happened now. We don't need to read all the history going up to it, but I'd suggest if you read the whole th whole chapter in context. Okay, verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Just like we saw back in Leviticus 23, that ceremony that they did and played out over and over again was pointing to him becoming the first fruits of them that slept. That's why he's the first and the last we read in Revelation. Go ahead, brother. 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. The word man here is uh, uh, 44, 44, I believe, or 4,444. I read my own writing sometimes, it gets cold and I have a hard time. So listen to what he says. The word man here is talking about a man. Both places. Not talking about a God. It's talking about a man. Okay, read the definition. For since by man came death. We're going to read the next verse. It's going to explain that. By man came also the resurrection of the dead. The man they're talking about is the man Yahushua HaMashiach. Go ahead, brother. Verse 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. The word all here means 39, 56. all. Yep, 3956, Greek 3956, it's plantos, okay? And it means everyone, all inclusive. So this is talking about from the first resident, from the Adam all the way to the last person, all are gonna be made alive. This is what he tells you in verse 23. This is very important, go ahead. But, but every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. This is cut and dry, folks. There's no way around this. It says, but every man in his own order, Yahushua Hamashiach, or Yahushua the Anointed One, the first fruits, okay? Afterward, they that are of the Messiah at when? When he comes back, okay? For the first resurrection. Go ahead. 24, then comes the end. After the thousand years. Go ahead. When when he shall del when have delivered up the kingdom to the mighty one. Which? And even the father, when he, when, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Now let's read that with, without using he and being all confused by what it's saying. It says, then comes the end. After the millennial reign comes the end. 
when he, Yahushua, the Messiah, will have delivered up the kingdom to the mighty right. one, which we talk yeah. about Yahuwah. He, even the Father, because that's who the, the mighty, mighty one is, one. is the right. Father. When he, Yahushua, have put, uh, put down, actually I think it's he, Yahuwah, shall have put down all rule and authority and power, because he told that he's supposed right. to sit there until that's done. Go ahead. Verse 25, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. So he, Yahushua, must reign till he, Yahuwah, have put all enemies under Yahushua's feet. That simple. Go ahead. Verse 26, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And that's going to be after the thousand years, after right. the great white throne judgment, and the last thing that will be put into the lake of fire along with the false prophet and them is going to be death. Go ahead. 27, for he has put all things under his feet. He, Yahuwah. But when he saith, all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. Yep. That's saying Yahuwah is finally accepted. Okay? He said he hath put all things under his feet. Yahuwah has put all things under Yahushua's feet. But when he saith, he Yahuwah saith, all things are put under him, Messiah, it is made known that he is accepted, which did put all things under Messiah. Okay? That means Yahuwah is finally accepted. They didn't accept him in the first resurrection. In, I mean, in the first covenant back in Israel's day. But finally, he's going to be accepted. Go ahead. Verse 28, last verse. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, mm -hmm. then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him that Yahuwah may be all in all. See why I put him and the he Amen. and all those together? Because this one tells you straight Amen. up. Amen. He says, and when all things shall be subdued unto Messiah, then, uh, uh, under Yahuwah, because he's turned his kingdom over to him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him, Yahuwah, that put all things under him. So who put all things under him? Yahuwah. That Yahuwah, the mighty one, Yahuwah, may be all and in all through his Ruach. John chapter 20. John chapter 20. How's he going to be all in all? How's he going to end up in everyone that's in the kingdom? John chapter 20. 20 starting at verse 17. Very important to understand what he's talking about. Okay, and this is when the Messiah was resurrected, talking to Mary. Yep. Okay. John chapter 20, verse 17. Jesus, or Yahushua, says unto her, Mary, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. See, you didn't want to be touch him because she would have been unclean and right. she wouldn't have been able to keep the Passover or do anything if she would have did that. But go ahead, brother. But go to my brother and then say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Now, if he is Yahuwah, how's he going to ascend? You know, he's going to go up to his father. This, he says that he identifies his father, which is Yahuwah, and that he's his, he's Yahushua's God or most high. Well, yeah, it's the most high. And your yeah. most high. Yep. Go ahead, brother. 18. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Master, the Messiah. Yes, sir. And that he had spoken these things unto her. Mm -hmm. then, then the same day at evening, bringing the first day of the Sabbath, say how it should be. Yeah, he's translating it correctly. When the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, came Yahushua and stood in the midst of, uh, midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. Now, this is so important to get, and most people don't get it because they don't go look at the Greek. They, they just go by what somebody told them about it. It says, Then the same day at evening, being the first uh, day of the week in most English translations, and it's really talking about the first of the Sabbaths, 
the first of the Sabbaths being the day of first fruit, mm -hmm. when Messiah had already risen from the dead and ascended to the Father, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled because they were afraid of the Yehudim, and they came to Yehusha and stood in the midst, saying, and, and, and Yehusha stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Now this peace, he's going to tell you what it is. It's the Ruach. Go ahead, brother. Verse 20, And when he had, had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the, uh, the Master. The master. Mm -hmm. Then said Yehusha to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send I send I to you. And if you've got the Holy Spirit or the Ruach HaKadosh dwelling within you, he sent you to take forth that bezoar, that gospel to all nations, just like he did these first sent out ones. Go ahead, brother. Verse 22, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. See, that's that's the the identity, identity of all those that are going to be in that first resurrection. That priesthood after the order of Melchizedek is going to have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them just like our Messiah had and then his apostles. Okay, Acts. Now we're going to read Acts chapter, chapter 1. Yep. Acts chapter 1, and we know on the day of Shavuot, two things. You had to watch yesterday's message because he gave the Ten Commandments and the whole of his covenant of love and mercy to Israel on the day of Shavuot when, uh, when Moshe stood on Mount mm -hmm. Sinai and received that. Amen. Okay? This uh, is the second. This is what happened after Messiah had ascended. We're going to read all that. Acts, the Acts chapter one, verse one. The for, the former writing have I made, O Theopolis, Theopolis, of all that Yahushua began both to do and teach. There's an argument whether he, this the, uh, Theopolis is a real guy or it was just kind of a yeah. statement. The way they did it really doesn't matter. He, he addressed in his letter. Okay, go ahead, brother. Until the day in which he was taken up, after he, after that he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. We, at the end of Matthew, he said, go throughout all the world, baptizing or immersing them in the name of Yahuwah, or the, the Father, and of the Messiah, and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's the orders, that's the commandments he had given. So it says, until that day in which he was taken up. And I was going to tell you in the next couple, next verse mm -hmm. when he was taken up, okay, on the, in, during the Feast of Weeks. Until the day mm -hmm. in which he was taken up, after he, the Messiah, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Go out, the ones that his father had given to him, the ones he chose. Go ahead. Verse 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion mm -hmm. or his suffering. Yes. By many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of Elohim. So he'd been seen to them for forty days after he had, uh, you know, uh, went up to the Father on the day of first fruits. He was walking on earth here, showing himself through many infallible proofs to the disciples, or the now sent out ones, and these things about the kingdom of Elohim. See, that's what he came to do, and we've been telling you about the kingdom of Elohim in Revelation today. Go ahead. Verse 4. And being, being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have, you have heard of me. So he's going to, the promise of the Father, he's going to identify that in the next verse as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. See, that they received the Holy Spirit when he breathed upon them, but then they were empowered at this baptism. Go ahead. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Not many days from now. Mm -hmm. And that day, he's talking about the day of today, Shavuot. Every yep. time the Pentecost yep. or Shavuot comes around, I, I start thinking, is today going to be the day when this miracle is going to be fulfilled? Not yet. Go ahead, brother. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Master, will you will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? 
So he's, they're asking the question, is it time for him to rule yeah. over the nation of Israel? No, that'll be at the millennial reign. Go ahead. Verse 7, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which, which the Father had put in his own power. Now, his own power is his Ruach HaKadosh. Now, and remember Messiah just said, No one's going to know the hour, the day, of the coming of the Son of Man. Not even the angels in heaven, nor him, save the Father. That's who's going to be. And he's just said the same thing mm -hmm. here. Go ahead. Verse 8, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witness, witnesses unto, the, unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea, and in Samaria, and under the utter farthest most part of the earth. Yep. And when he, verse 9, when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of, out of their sight. Mm -hmm. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahushua, which is taken up from you into heaven, so shall come in like manner as you have seen him go up into heaven. So he's going to come back like he left, okay? And he said, don't sit here in amazement. Mm -hmm. He will return. Obviously not in their lifetime. Then go ahead, brother. Now we're in chapter 2 of Acts. We're going to finish Jump it Jump over there and finish up. Yep. Chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was finally come, they were all with one accord and in one place. Now, do you believe that they were all 100% agreement on all of Scripture? I doubt that very seriously. But they were in agreement that they had come together on the day of Shavuot, or Pentecost, as it was commanded in the Torah. So they were in one accord as far as the Torah is concerned. Go ahead. Verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from, from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And again, I'm, I, I, I could just see this happening in my mind's eye, yeah. you know, that this would be fulfilled just like this. Mm -hmm. And I do believe it's going to happen to all of them as the prophecy of Joel was, was speaking all the sons and daughters. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. And, they, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat or rested upon each of them. Now, I wonder why they're cloven tongues. We can only spec and speculate. Cloven, if you know like a, a, a goat or a ram mm -hmm. or a lamb, their, their feet are cloven and a cattle's feet. They split. Okay, split. And these tongues of fire were split. I believe that's symbol, symbolic of, of Yahuwah and his Ruach. Okay, mm -hmm. one fire, cloven. Go ahead, brother. Yep, verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues or languages, as the speak gave them utterance. So they began, all of them that had these tongues of fire, to speak with other languages. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5, and, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jew, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So, notice there's a comma after Jews, or the Yehudim here. Right. Says, and there were dwellings in Jerusalem. They, they were living right. there in Jerusalem, the Yehudim, comma. Yeah. Devout men. De and devout men, like a... Uh, the, the centurion Cornelius. He was a devout man as he was done that. So these were all devout men, and they were what? Out of every nation under the heavens. So it wasn't just the Yehudim gathered here together, but people from every nation that were devout, okay? Devout believers. Go ahead, Verse brother. 6. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded or confused, because every man heard them speak in his own language. So this this language, this miracle that was being done, it did say they were speaking in other languages, but it, here they were understanding the disciple or the apostles at this time in their own language, even though they weren't speaking in that. So gift of tongues is not just speaking in other language, it's understanding other languages as well. Go ahead, brother. Verse 7, And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, 
Behold, are not all these which speak Galilean? So they knew all these disciples or apostles at this time were from Galilee, but yet they all these other people from these other nations understood them as if they spoke in their own language. Go ahead. Go ahead. Verse, verse 8, and how, and how hear we every man in our own language, our own tongue, wherein we were born? Verse 9, the Parthians and the Medes and the Elamites, Elamites and, the, and the dwellers, residents of Mesopotamia, mm -hmm. and in Judea, mm -hmm. Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, mm -hmm. Pergia, Pamphylia, and Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. So see, uh, Yehudim or proselytes, converts. So it's not all people that are Physical is right here. Go ahead, bro. Verse 11, the Crete, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our own language and wonder and the wonderful works of Elohim. So they're hearing this, even though they're speaking the tongue of the Nazarenes, as if they spoke in their own language, the wonderful works of Elohim or the kingdom of Elohim. Same thing Messiah preached and taught. Go ahead, brother. Verse 12. Twelve, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, "What, what means that? What, what does this mean?" Mm -hmm. Others mocking or you know ridiculing. Yeah, them. these men are full of new wine. So they were accusing them of being drunk mm -hmm. at nine hour, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock in the morning. That's Verse right. fourteen. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them. You men of Judea and, and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken unto my words. Now what's he talking about? He's talking about you guys that come from Jerusalem. He's speaking to the Yehudim here. Okay. Don't, because that's the ones who was calling everybody else drunk. Okay. So notice what he says. Go ahead, brother. Verse 15. For these are not drunk as as you have supposed, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Or nine o'clock in the morning. None of them were drunk. The, they were, there was the gift of the of baptism of the Holy Spirit that was upon them. Go ahead. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith Yahuwah, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And this doesn't mean every single person. This means on all the nations, just like he did at Cornelius, okay? Now they're talking about pouring it out on all nations, which this hasn't all happened yet. This is pointing towards the prophecy of that. Go ahead. And your sons. Uh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions. And your old man shall dream dreams. And he's quoting the book of Joel. Yep. And verse 18. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So, and that's Joel 2, 29, that he's, that's being quoted there. And that has not been poured out on everybody. It's been poured out on all nations. But that baptism where people are empowered in this has not been fulfilled like in the book of Joel. Go ahead. Verse 19, And I will show wonders in heaven above and the signs of the earth beneath, blood and fire, vapor and smoke. Now he shows signs in the heavens all the time. We saw signs in the heavens this year when we saw the total solar eclipse on what the day we kept the Passover on. Okay? And that happened, we believe, on the day that Messiah suffered, okay? And, 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 but these up, some of these other signs have not yet been seen. Blood, we've seen blood moons, okay? And that's a, a full moon that looks like blood. It's a lunar eclipse. And fire and vapor and smoke, like was on Mount Sinai, okay? Go ahead, brother. Verse 20. 20. I mean, tw yeah, 20. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the, moon, that. Yeah, and the moon into blood, before that great notable day of, of Elohim come. Okay, all that's going to happen before he's come, but it's going to happen over and over and over again. For us to predict, per, try to predict the return of Messiah, or the Father in this case, would be 
Futile. Go ahead, brother. And shall come to pass that whosoever shall call the name of Yahuwah Elohim shall be saved. The time will come when everybody that calls mm -hmm. on the name of Yahuwah, your Elohim, will be saved. Joel Amen. 2, 32. And I'm, I guess that's it. That's it. That was a lot of meat. And you might need to listen to this video a couple times over. If you have any questions, comments, and concerns, leave them in the comment section on the YouTube page. Okay? We'll try to answer them best we can. Okay? We did the best we can to communicate this, but there's a lot of meat here. Okay? <laughs> and we, yeah. we brought our steak knives to cut it up, but, you know, there's a lot being said. So if you got comments, concerns, questions, make sure to put them in the comment section below. And if you, if you haven't yet subscribed to the Philadelphia Assemblies, we hope that you would do that. We also would pray and hope that you, if you like this video or any of our videos, you would give it a thumbs up on YouTube, share it to your Facebook page, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get notified of our next video. And we're going to ask that you have a great rest of your Shavuot if you're keeping that today. And may Yahuwah bless until we meet again.